Good morning to you. I hope you had uh, a good weekend. Uh, but Pepsi, or uh, as we always joke whenever we talk to you guys about this company, uh, it could be called Frito Lay. Yeah. Yeah, Frito Lay, Pepsi, it's all one big carb fest in the middle of the grocery store. I think that they sell uh, pretty much everything. You know, it's Doritos, Fritos. I think, um, you know, what we're seeing at this company is, you know, pretty stable in terms of consumer demand for their products, whether that's the Pepsi products, the soft drink products, um, or the Frito-Lay products. And, and for all of these, we're seeing a boost, um, you know, in demand and mentions from uh, the COVID lockdowns and shutdowns. People are talking about what's at the grocery store and what's not. Uh, we see a nice little 20% uh, bump uh, for Frito-Lay products. And then on the soft drink side, it's much more subdued at something like 8%. And so I think that a lot of times, you know, as, as traders and investors, every time we look at a company, we try to find a direction to trade it in. Whereas with Pepsi and Frito-Lay here, um, you know, I'm going into it thinking, all right, it looks kind of like you would expect it to look. And I think that the way that uh, you guys present options and opportunities and selling premium that's pretty interesting to know as well. And so uh, pretty stable for both of these, uh, for, for Pepsi as a company as a whole, and it's two divisions with a um, with the kind of the, the bump you might expect out of uh, quarantine slash shutdown measures. Andy, it's not shocking to me that with more people spending more time at home, you're seeing a spike in, in you know, in demand for Frito-Lay products and things like that. And Pepsi, obviously more people are buying soda in the grocery store and bringing it home. But how does that match up with restaurants and the, the obvious drop off in home consumption of soda versus restaurant consumption of soda? Do you guys have any, any data on anything like that? Or is that what's kind of flattening out Pepsi's curve? That, that's what's flattening out Pepsi's curve for sure. There's nothing going on. If you look back at Coca-Cola's report, uh, which I think was last week, um, they indicated uh, yeah. a global drop. And, and a lot of that was attributed to they just aren't selling in stadiums. They aren't selling in uh, restaurants, movie theaters, all those type of events where uh, you would go out and purchase and, and not even necessarily know what or care what brand you were getting you were just getting a soft drink at a ball game not something that you're going to be talking about and so i think people are much more likely to be talking about uh, what they buy at the grocery store right now so we're seeing a bump in our data but it will be offset by a uh, significant drop in uh, event-based uh, sales of these products and andy i'm glad you guys bring this up because my question kind of relates to this uh, where Pepsi differs from Coke primarily is the idea of Frito, the part of it uh, being yep. that they have Frito-Lay and they're not just beverages. Uh, just thinking to myself, logically, I would think that the beverage component would have more exposure in terms of these events and restaurants and that Frito-Lay and this boost that you're seeing from more and more people buying snacks that they can eat while at home could actually be an overall net positive. Of course, this is just me kind of thinking out loud. I don't know if you have data that supports that or if, uh, if you know, there's just as much restaurant exposure for those products as well. No, there's not. And I think that shows in our data. I think that when you look at the chart, uh, Frito-Lay is starting to get a massive pop at the end of this. And it's because of that grocery store exposure. It's one of those kind of uh, items that has a long shelf life, the kind of thing that you might put uh, in a in the guest bedroom closet if you're stocking up for Armageddon and that sort of thing. And so I think that that's, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. I think that this is a different beast than Coca-Cola, uh, who does, you know, rely on beverages almost exclusively, whereas Pepsi has a nice portfolio and Frito-Lay makes up a very, very big percentage uh, of their uh, sales and is doing quite well during this period. And so I think that Pepsi will have uh, a pretty good report. It won't be anything as bad as Coke's, and uh, they'll be able to come out and have some pretty decent visibility into what's going on uh, during these lockdowns. And, and for those at home, Kevin, who are trying to kind of figure all this out, you know, you, you hear Pepsi and you'd instantly just think it's almost like probably an identical company. 
uh, to Coca-Cola if you didn't do that additional extra step of research to realize they even have Frito-Lay underneath their umbrella. Uh, an easy way to even take a look at that and kind of get an idea of that exposure is to use the company profile on Thinkorswim, of course, uh, which you can find on the Trade All Products tab and then click in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, Kevin, I have that pulled up on the platform here as I tie this into what Andy's saying and showing that strength out of Frito-Lay. Well, if I look at this data from Trefis, I see uh, Frito-Lay 40%. Uh, Frito-Lay North America, rather, 40%. North American beverages, only 21%. So, Kevin, uh, to me, this shows that the area of strength is actually their biggest component. This could potentially, you know, end up being uh, a good thing, as Andy's pointing out. Exactly right. And, guys, here's another little spoiler alert. We, we, we joke a lot on this show about PepsiCo could be named Frito-Lay, but hold on. Pepsi wouldn't even be second place to name the company. I think if you were going to go with a number two choice, it'd probably be Gatorade, as Gatorade now sells more nationally than than uh, legacy Pepsi products. So, I mean, you know, they, they've got such a deep portfolio of, you know, liquids and food and Quaker Oats and other things that... Um, other than the names Coke and Pepsi, that's really all they have in common, frankly, because Pepsi is so diversified. And with Andy's data here, you know, you got to look at this differently than you looked at Coke because it's not the same. And they may still get the consistent, you know, home bought uh, soda versus the drop off in restaurants, but. PepsiCo has Frito-Lay, and PepsiCo has so many other things that make up their, their portfolio. It's really just not the same story when you compare these two stocks, although they obviously seem like they would be obvious comparisons, guys. Yeah, and Andy, uh, I want to pull you in here, and we obviously got the, the idea that the short term, this could potentially be a positive. We know there's negatives associated with this, and these stocks have been discounted as such, but I want to get your kind of take on the longer term trend shifts that we're seeing within this space. We know that over the last uh, couple of years, uh, there's been shifts away from these sugary, snacky type of products into more healthy things. Uh, and obviously, there's the vocal minorities that are, are talking keto diets and, and vegan diets all over social media. And we've often kind of joked that they are the vocal minority because you hear so much uh, from the people that are doing that as they, they get excited about it. But um, how much does something like this, where everyone is sheltered in place, um, put a little bit of a, you know, a, a dam, if you will, to, to slow the, the shift of these trends? Do people throw those diets to the wayside as they're, uh, you know, at home and maybe willpower is down a little bit? Or have you seen, uh, for the most part, that people are, are holding up with those uh, diets that they've had? Uh, the day is pretty inconclusive there. I think people like to talk about <clears throat> some of the bad habits that they've developed uh, sitting at home, and so I think there's a lot of that. I, I will say that Pepsi's done a really nice job of reacting and responding and getting ahead of these curves. A Mountain Dew Zero Sugar uh, is probably one of the best product launches that they've had in a very long time. They've got uh, Gatorades that are very light in uh, sugars, and I think that, that they're in a good spot. They, that once again, have proven their ability to diversify and to meet consumer demand in pretty much every area of the supermarket. And so I think, um, you know, whether or not the, the shutdowns have uh, significantly impacted consumer dieting trends, I think they probably did the first two or three weeks. And now everybody's kind of figuring out that you've actually got to um, you know, this this could go on a while, so you better not uh, be off the wagon for too long. I think um, whether or not that's happened, uh, Pepsi's in a very good place uh, to be the company that responds really nicely uh, to these shifts in consumer behavior, whether it's uh, away from uh, sugary drinks like you mentioned or anything else that may pop up in the future in terms of flavor profiles, whatever. They've got the distribution and they've got the uh, R&D to get it done.